Okay, this is going to be the final video um, of this particular section, and it's limited versus unlimited government. We're going to look at the difference between a constitutional government and a government that has a constitution. Two different things. Um, just a little review here, social contract. We looked at the fact that John Locke stated the purpose of government was to secure our natural rights and that government gets its right to govern from the consent of the governed, which is the people. The people are the source of the power for this government. Since power comes from the people, they also have the right to take it away if the government is not serving the purpose, purposes for which it was established. Insofar that in extreme cases, like we did um, back in the late 1700s, revolution, if you have a government that is limiting the individual rights of people, you may come to a point where there is a need for a revolution, which is what we did. Constitutional governments, limited governments, um, should be synonymous with this idea of constitutional government. Constitutional governments have an established and respected restraints on their powers. There are laws. There are free elections that if you don't like what's going on in government, you can go and vote these people out. In an unlimited government, those who govern, the people in power, are free to use their powers they choose. They, have, they are unrestrained by laws. There aren't necessarily elections, and if there are elections, um, typically there's only one person running. There's only one political party. Um, so they make it look like you have elections, but they're really not there. So this idea of limited government is what we have here in the United States versus an unlimited government, which are associated with your dictatorships. Um, some words I'm going to throw out here that should be synonymous with this idea of unlimited government, and several of these were used um, in cooperation with King George III. So get King George III down in your notes. He was the king during the Revolutionary War and the king that we really had a lot of problems with. Um, there was controversy when Thomas Jefferson called him a tyrant, um, which is a ruler um, who is cruel and oppressive, which at the, that period of time King George III was. An autocracy, and this is review, it's government by a single person having unlimited power. And this idea of a despot or despotism um, is another term that was used um, in the Declaration of Independence by Thomas Jefferson. So make sure you understand that King George III was called a tyrant. Um, he was called a despot. He was autocratic in his rule. All of these um, with this idea that we had no say-so what was going on. We had no control, no power in, in the rules that were be, being forced upon us. Oligarchy, once again, is associated with an unlimited government, and this is a small group of people. Dictatorship, rule, control, or leadership by one person with total power, and then this idea of totalitarianism, um, the political concept that citizens should be totally subject to an absolute state authority. So most of these are review. You've seen these before and are associated with an unlimited government. Constitutional government, on the other hand, when the Founding Fathers um, created this government, it was based on their readings of both history and that natural rights, different natural rights philosopher. Um, and the founders believed that this new government that they were created should be a limited or a constitutional government. And so in this form of government, the powers of the person or group controlling the government are limited by a set of laws and customs called a constitution. So when we start looking specifically at our government, there are laws that our rulers have to follow. There, are, um, there is a written constitution, and it's... Um, you know, it outlines the powers that all of the branches of government and how the state should interact and the process of how we are going to amend um, if we need to make changes to it. And um, if there's conflicts between the state governments and the national government, how do we resolve those? So everything is written down in this Constitution. And there's a term that I want you to get in your notes, and this is extremely important, and we're going to focus on this, um, this idea from this point on all the way to the end of the course, and it's this um, idea of rule of law, R-U-L-E, of law. And it's the idea that we do have a set of laws and that everyone is subject to them. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or you're just some homeless person. Everyone is subject 
to the laws and you'll be doing some more um, stuff on that. So rule of law needs to be in there and it's, it's the foundation of our government that everyone is subject to the laws that have been established and written down. A constitution is just a set of customs, tradition, rules, and laws that set forth the basic way a government is organized and operated. Ours is in writing. Not all of them are in writing. Great Britain's constitution um, is, is a lot of a, a combination of um, common laws and different documents and things like that. So there isn't, isn't neatly written down like ours is where we can, they can pull it up and read all of it. Um, this is important when we go and talk about a constitutional government versus a government that has a constitution. You have good and bad governments that have constitutions. The former Soviet Union, which was communist, they had a dictator, um, had one of the longest and most elaborate constitution, but their citizens had very few rights that it guaranteed. <clears throat> so a constitutional government um, is one that's going to have limited um, governmental powers and this constitution is going to uh, limit the power. So just because a country has a constitution does not mean it has a constitutional government. We have a constitution but we also have a constitutional government. There are like the former Soviet Union like I said that have constitutions but they don't have a constitutional government because um, in a constitutional government um, the Constitution is a higher authority. It is above the government and everyone must obey it. So if this Constitution, and this can happen, provides unlimited political power, it's not a constitutional government. If it limits the powers but has no way to enforce those limitations, it's still not a constitutional government. So be very, very careful. A constitutional government has limits that are set up by a document or a constitution and everyone has to obey. Um, but just because you have a constitution, you could have a constitution that says people have no rights and that you have unlimited political power or it doesn't outline a way that you can enforce any of these things. When we start talking about unlimited and limited governments, this idea of efficiency or inefficiency comes into play. Um, when you start looking at our government, a lot of people get very frustrated with the process because it can be long and drawn out. If the complicated manner in which constitutional government is organized often takes a long time for things to get done. Um, inefficiency was actually seen as an advantage by the framers, so make sure you get this and understand this in your notes. You know, uh, we could have Adolf Hitler or someone like him in charge and have things be very efficient. He says it, you do it. It gets done. But, you know, what is the price that we pay for efficiency where you have everyone agreeing, um, everyone following or having to do what some individual says, or do we want a process that is complicated? And the difficulties would help prevent the abuse of power and make it more likely that when a decision was finally made, it would be a good one. So we want this um, political play. I mean, when we start looking at politics and, and, you know, the Republicans versus the Democrats and the ideas that each one of them have, uh, we don't want one group with the same ideas making all of the laws very efficient, very nice and neat. Like I said, dictatorships are very efficient. But do we have the best outcome for um, the most people? And then finally, we want to talk about the basic concepts of our American democracy, this constitutional government, this limited government that we have. And these ideas are extremely important in our government. And the first one is the fundamental worth and dignity of every person. These are ideals. These are goals. We need to understand that through our, our history, um, we have not always done a very good job um, at exhibiting these concepts, but these are goals that we have set for ourselves. But this idea, and we have worked very hard, and we are st I think we still have some time to go because there are still groups of people that are discriminated against in the United States for various reasons, and we'll talk about that. But this idea that the worth and dignity of every person is, um, is something that we strive for. Respect for equality of all, not condition. Please get this in your notes. 
we have equality of opportunity. Everyone in the United States has the same opportunity. And uh, I have a lot of students who want to argue this point, and we'll have an opportunity to talk about that. Um, but, you know, the only thing that holds you back in the United States is yourself. Um, Barack Obama being the president of the United States, coming from his background, should be proof positive that everyone has the same opportunities. Um, it's what we do with those opportunities. And then everyone um, is equal before the law. So if you are um, being arrested or if you're going through a court case or there's some sort you know, of discrimination type issue, everyone in the United States should be treated equally regardless of your religion, regardless of your sex, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of um, your political views, everyone should be treated uh, the same. We are not guaranteed equality of condition. Obviously, we're not all born with the same talents. We're not born with the same abilities and the same socioeconomic level. Some people are born into poverty. Some people are born you know, into very well-off conditions. So we are not equal in condition. But everyone in the United States has the opportunity to do whatever they want, and they're, they're the only ones that confine themselves, and then equality before the law. Majority rule. Obviously, we have to have a way <clears throat> to make rules, and so we vote in the majority rules. But we also have to keep in mind minority rights. The majority is not always right. If we look at the history of the United States, we have done some very bad things to groups of people. But it's what the majority wanted. Um, so we should always keep in mind how these rules and laws are going to affect the minority. It is a goal. We haven't always done the best at, at, at getting there. Compromise is necessary. When we start talking specifically about the creation of our Constitution, some people refer to that document as a bundle of compromises. Make sure you get that in your notes. The Constitution itself is a bundle of compromise. Without compromise, we don't have that document. Um, and we'll also discuss um, how compromise um, works today. You have Republicans and Democrats who get on TV every day and said, we will not compromise. We have the Tea Party, and we'll talk about them. They'll get on television, and, and you know, the idea is no one wants to compromise anymore. So we'll look specifically at that. And then the widest possible degree of individual freedom. <clears throat> And again, this is an ideal. This is something we strive for. Um, there have been groups of people who have been discriminate, discriminated throughout our history, and we'll look at how that works. Um, and, um, you know, once we give a group freedom, it's very hard to take that freedom away. So we'll look specifically about those.